the AC for a little bit while learning about some dogs. All right, y'all come on in and sit down here. So my name is Zach. I'm part of Stivers Homestead. Um, we come here every year to speak about homesteading, farm stuff. And this year we decided to bring several of our friends down. And all the way from Pensacola, Florida, we have Hidden Oaks Homestead. And it's their turn to come here and talk about livestock guardian dogs. So I'll keep mine short and sweet and everybody give a warm welcome to Chip. Woo! Woo! <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Uh, first, I want to thank uh, the Appalachian Fair for uh, giving us the opportunity to come up here and speak to you guys, and to Zach and Jim from Cyrus Homestead for sending the invite. It was a, it was a fun flight up here. Uh, so, my, myself and my wife, Nicole, in the back with the camera. Uh, we came. We're from the state, we're from Florida, but we were living in the UAE for a while, uh, in Dubai actually, and I fell in love with watching YouTube homesteaders. It's so silly when I say it out loud. But uh, I fell in love with, with the lifestyle, watching uh, Zach and Jen and other homestead YouTube channels, and I told Nicole that I wanted to give up that lifestyle that we were living and get some land and start homesteading ourselves. So uh, we moved back, we bought 20 acres, and we started putting everything together. And we live out in the woods on 20 acres, and we have all kinds of uh, different predators from coyotes, bears, uh, there could, there's bobcats, raccoons, just everything out there in the woods, and everything loves to eat farm animals, especially chickens, baby goats, baby sheep. It's easy prey for them. So we started looking into ways to protect our livestock so that they could work for us and we're not just uh, feeding the local predators. Only the Shepherd, which is my favorite, and the, uh, the Great Pyrenees. So, uh, like I said, I'm a homesteader. Uh, I'm a helicopter mechanic. Uh, I'm an Army veteran. I'm a lot of things. I'm not a public speaker. And uh, I am not a dog whisperer. So uh, what, what I'm teaching you guys is just what I've learned in my time working with these dogs, okay? And before, before I get started, uh, these dogs, dogs in general, they're, uh, they're, they're crazy animals, right? You can train dogs to ride skateboards, surfboards, you can train all kinds of dogs to do an array of different things that you wouldn't think they'd be able to do. So when I'm up here talking to you about livestock guardian dogs, just know that the information that I'm giving you is just uh, general tips and it's nothing concrete. If I, if I tell you that cattle dogs don't make good livestock guard dogs and you have a cattle dog that is a good livestock guard dog, I'm not saying they can't be, I'm just saying it's not what they were designed to do. All right, so don't beat me up if you hear me say something that you disagree with, all right? You're in the back, laughing at me, all right? <laughs> so uh, this, she's, she's smaller, she doesn't really stick out. And then uh, Roxy in the back is the queen bee. She kind of runs things. No, I'm sorry. Uh, so the white one is a Great Pyrenees, and the other three are Anatolian Shepherds. Uh, my heart is with the Anatolian Shepherd, but we got a Great Pyrenees, just kind of mix it up, break up the uh, contrast a little bit. <laughs> so uh, when I'm talking about livestock guardian dogs, hey, y'all know you can get a mutt and you can put them out there with your goats but you're probably not going to get the best result than if you went and actually got one of these dogs that are bred for livestock protection uh, so the livestock guardian dog this this started like four thousand years ago uh, when people were more nomadic right we we didn't settle down we just kind of roamed uh, they started in east asia and just kind of kept going across across the country towards the west until they got to Europe. And they would have all these, these sheep and these goats that they would keep with them and they would herd them as they moved across the land. And they started, uh, they were losing animals to whatever the predator was, wherever they were at. Where'd my water go? So in these animals and they changed over the years because what they would do is as they're moving, whatever the local dog in that region was would breed with their livestock guardians. And so it would kind of evolve 
until they got into Europe around Turkey is where they stopped and that's where they settled down. So uh, the federal sheepdog program, this is actually an interesting story. It's kind of how uh, livestock guardians got to be in the US. So in the 1930s, we had a lot of things going on. Our government, our country wasn't what it is right now. So, so most of our clothing had to be made and it came from cotton or it came from wool, right? Wool uh, comes from sheep. And if farmers are losing sheep, then that's hurting their supply of wool and it's hurting the country's ability to clothe everybody. So John A. Wallace, Henry A. Wallace, was the Secretary of Agriculture at the time and he's trying to figure out a way for these, uh, these sheep herders to protect their livestock. So he's trying, in our country, trying to find uh, the best livestock guardian dog in the country. And he's in Washington, D.C., and he's at uh, some kind of fancy dinner. And he's talking at his table with uh, a Turkish delegate. Uh, and he's explaining to him why he's in D.C. trying to get this, pro this funding for these uh, livestock guardian dog programs. And the Turkish dude that he's talking to says, well, the best dog is the Turkish sheep dog that we have in our country. And they spent the rest of the night talking about livestock guardian dogs and protecting sheep. Just a huge coincidence that he had to them out and they're great dogs. But we just, this is where it gets crazy, our government with uh, about to get into World War II and the Great Depression and everything, we didn't have the funds to feed all these big dogs. So we actually had to get rid, shut this program down because we couldn't afford to feed these 14 dogs. So they shut the program down and they auctioned off the dogs to somebody in the Virgin Islands. And uh, that's where the Livestock Guardian dog ended in the US and I thank you for your time. <laughs> so, but uh, bringing dogs home from Turkey, they were bringing them home and putting them to work on the farms. And that's kind of how the whole Livestock Guardian thing with the Anatolian Shepherds really got started here in the US. Okay, so now I'll start, now that we got a little background, I'll start talking about uh, what you're looking for, characteristics in these dogs. Okay, a lot of people, when they ask us about livestock guardians, they're like, how do you train them to protect livestock? And the quick answer is, is you really don't. Uh, you train them like you would train a house dog uh, you teach them to sit and come to their name. Just basic obedience is really what you're going for. But where it really, where they really get their uh, training is just early imprinting, putting them with the animals that they're going to grow up with. Okay, so they kind of bond with the animals that you got them with, whether it's goats, turkeys, sheep. Did I say goats? Goats again. You put them with these animals when they're puppies. And then that just kind of becomes the family. One of the biggest ones we hear all the time, we bought this German Shepherd, we put him in and he won't quit killing our chickens or he won't leave our goats alone. Well, he's not a livestock guardian dog. Attentiveness, okay. Is he paying attention? Is he just sleeping at night or is he alert, right? It, he, he can love the animals and he can do great, but uh, the predators come out at night. And if he just sleeps through it and he doesn't care, it doesn't matter. And then protectiveness, if he's attentive, if uh, he's scared to get out there and do his job when those coyotes are at the fence, then then it doesn't matter. You need a breed that's gonna go out there and it's gonna meet those predators head on. So how do they do it? There, there's three different ways that uh, the, the livestock guardian protects its livestock. The first is by scent. People don't think about it, but when your dog's going around marking trees, marking his territory, he's letting other predators and other animals in the area know, hey, this isn't, this probably isn't the place you want to mess with. I know you can smell the baby goats, but you can smell me too. And uh, predators, by nature, they don't like to fight. They want to find an easy target. They want to go for a baby goat or a chicken. They don't want to fight because they know if I have to fight, if I get hurt fighting, then I might not be able to hunt tomorrow night, right? So they don't want to fight. So they smell the scent, and that's usually deterrent enough. Second is vocalization. 
when they hear, when our dogs hear the coyotes in the distance, they run to the fence line and they start barking at them to let them know, hey, get back, you don't want none of this. You don't want it. And then if it comes down to it, if, if that pack of coyotes is like, you know what, we haven't eaten in a week or two, we're gonna roll the dice and we're gonna go in. Aggression, they will, they will work together and they're gonna take out whatever predator it is, okay? And y'all got time for a story real quick? Uh -huh. while, while I'm right here and while it's on my mind. Uh, so we breed and sell Anatolia Shepherds. Uh, we had a family in Tampa come down. True story, this is true. I'm not a comedian making up stories up here. Uh, they met us halfway, they met us in Tallahassee. They bought a livestock guardian dog from us. And about a month ago, she sent me pictures back. And come by my booth later and I'll show you the pictures. But she sent me pictures, her uh, livestock guardian, she bought an Anatolian from us. It was attacked by an alligator, okay? Uh, they have a little creek. They said the creek is like a foot and a half deep on their property. They have never seen an alligator before. They go there all the time in the summer to let the kids play. She's got a three-year-old daughter, and she said that alligator came out of the water to her daughter, and the Anatolian jumped on the alligator and like kind of threw himself in front of it to sacrifice himself for the girl, and the dad was able to get a, a log or a stick and throw it at the alligator. Alligator let go and ran off, and they had to take the uh, take the Anatolian to the vet. So it, it's just a touching story for us, knowing that maybe if if they didn't get one from us and they would have trusted that job to a beagle or something, that little girl might not be here today. But the little girl is alive and well because of the efforts of their livestock guardian dog. <clears throat> So uh, farm dogs versus livestock guardian dogs. Uh, a lot of people, when they hear live, y'all can come sit down. We got chicken dogs. A lot of people just think farm dogs, right? And when we think farm dogs, we're thinking Australian shepherds, blue tick, he blue healers, you know, Australian shepherds. And uh, those are good farm dogs. They're great for herding cattle. They're great for herding sheep, like this guy's doing right here. They're herding dogs. Okay, they're not necessarily livestock guardian dogs. They might bark when they hear something, but they're gonna spend more time harassing your livestock, because that's what they do. They like to harass, they like to, to chase them around and, and corral them. That's what herding dogs do. So uh, our livestock guardian dogs, uh, if you were watching our video early, they let the goats run and jump and bounce on them. The chickens will come up and peck at their tails and they. They don't care because it's their babies and it's family to them. Herding dogs look at livestock as work. Livestock guardian dogs look at livestock as family. Personal protection. Uh, people get German Shepherds, Rottweilers, Doberman Pinchers, and those are great dogs for personal protection. They bond with their owners and they will protect their owners. Uh, your livestock guardian dog doesn't care really about you as much as they care about their livestock, right? Uh, and those other dogs are not gonna care about livestock the way that they care about you. So these dogs are bred for their own individual tasks than livestock guardian dogs. If you want to protect your livestock, get yourself a livestock guardian dog. And like I said, at the beginning on, with the dog on the skateboard, you can train a dog to do a job that it wasn't meant to do, but you're really, uh, you're really rolling the dice if you get a dog that's not bred for it to do the job. You might end up with a house pet because he doesn't like sleeping outside. If you get an adult, uh, it's, you might be inheriting somebody else's headache. You know, very rarely, does a farmer get rid of a good livestock guardian dog? You know, I would never get rid of mine because they do such a great job for me. But now if uh, if I got a livestock guardian dog that won't stay in the fence or that wants to come in and sleep on the front porch or uh, I keep losing goats, okay, and I need to get me a good one, I'm gonna get rid of that one so that I don't have to keep feeding it, right? So be careful if you are getting one I always suggest getting a puppy, that way you know how it was trained, you know what it's been through, and you're not rolling the dice like that.
I'm forgetting to push my buttons. Okay, and here's another one that's really, really hard for people are workers. They're, they're part of your livestock, okay? They need, you need to get one young, and you need to get it with your livestock as early as you can. When we have ours, at about four weeks, we take them out and we put them with our livestock so that they're already getting adjusted and getting used to being around livestock at four weeks old. 24 seven with the livestock. When it gets cold outside, leave them outside. They're built for it. They can handle the cold, they can handle the heat. If you wouldn't bring your goats in, don't bring in your, your dogs, okay? When you bring your dog in the house, he can't do his job. You're taking them away from your goats when they need them the most. Don't coddle them, okay? Your, your livestock guardian dog should never see how good life can be, okay? <laughs> we have our lap dogs that jump up on the couch with us and they watch, they watch Andy Griffith with us at night and we love them to death and we feed them out of the refrigerator when we're making a sandwich. If the Anatolian shepherds know what happens in the house, they're gonna want to be in the house. And you can't let that happen. You gotta keep them outside with the goats, okay? If they get a taste of the good life, they're gonna jump out and they're gonna keep trying to get back in the house where it's nice and cozy. But you know what else they kill? Baby goats. They kill baby goats. They kill your chickens. They will get bored and they will chase your dogs. They don't care. They are. I'm not gonna say that because I got a microphone. <laughs> but these are not livestock guardian dogs, okay? They will kill a coyote, but they will kill everything else if they get bored. They're very territorial. We have to. We got them as uh, pasture ornaments. We did not get them as livestock guardians. And uh, we found out real quick that when uh, our does are pregnant and they start dropping babies on the ground, we got to remove our donkeys and put them in a different pasture because we will come out and they will just, baby goats will be gone. Not gone, they'll be there, but they won't be with us anymore. There's another point of controversy. Prepare yourself for the next slide. Rescues are not livestock guardian dogs. Rescues are not livestock guardian dogs. We have seven dogs, we have two rescues. We love rescues and we support, at Hidden Oaks Homestead, we support getting rescues, we do, but not to do a job, okay? You're getting that dog and you don't know what it's been through in life, you don't know where it came from, you can't hire a, a rescue dog to get out there and do your job. All right, and this is just a, a shameless plug. I'm gonna open it up for questions, I'm sure. You guys got thousands of questions for me. But uh, like I said, Nicole and I, we are in the panhandle of Florida, Pensacola area. We have a YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. If you're interested in getting the Livestock Guardian dog, come see us. If you want a rescue dog, go to the pound. Uh, does anybody got any questions? Not one. You can't think, this whole presentation, you can't think of one question for me. I got one right here, thanks. Uh-huh, puppies. Uh, yeah, with, with the actual training to protect, they just bond with them. And uh, ju just, like, just like my son, if somebody tried to do something to my child, I'm just naturally gonna defend my child. When they're young, they grow up with the livestock and they just have that natural instinct to protect. No, sir. Yes, that's a good question. Yes, we, we have came out and uh, had bloody legs on our donkeys where they have had to run them off. Yeah, it's true. So, but we still have donkeys. That's a conversation for another day. Anything? <laughs> Nothing? Ma'am, you got... Got it all? Y'all ready for the test? Oh, please. Uh-huh. Yep, just, just like Caesar Milan talks about with your pack leader, pack mentality, they figure all that out and our dogs. One thing I will say with that is don't get two males. Avoid that. Females all day, that's why we have one male and we have three females. 
Uh, depending on how much space and how many animals you have, uh, I would suggest more than one. Okay, if you watch wrestling, it's always better when they have a tag team partner, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, she is. She is. I had to think about it because I like to look at Roscoe as as the boss, and he's the biggest one. But uh, Roxy pushes him around, so just just like at home, you know. Yeah, just like at home. I'm being recorded by my wife right now. Yes, beating. Oh man, uh, you just you just try, really. You just you just try because. Uh, Chickens will come and eat out of the, the dog's bowl while they're eating, and they might snap at them to try to run them off, but the chicken's just going to come back, and then if they don't feel like eating the kibble, they'll go and they'll eat grain with the, with the goats. It's, it's just a big mess. We just, we just put it out and see who feels like eating what that day. <laughs> About three and a half years. We're newlyweds. If you love it, it's easy. If if you don't, it's work. Because you know, I wake up. I like I said, I get. Uh, I'm a helicopter mechanic. Uh, By day. I work for the U.S. Navy's <laughs> flight school as a contracted helicopter mechanic. I got to be at work at 6:30. I wake up at four o'clock in the morning to to help with some of the chores before I go to work, and then I get home, get the kids off the school bus, and it's right back out to the barn. And then, you know, there's, uh, there's always projects that need to be done. And I see a lot of people here in Tennessee uh, walking around, fanning themselves, coming in to get a break from the heat. It's not hot here. It's not hot. I don't know what you guys are thinking. This ain't hot. We're, we haven't had, I don't think we've had rain since March. Our grass is brown and crunchy. And just no rain, we can't, no, it's, I think, uh, they said it's like 97 degrees today at home, but they said it feels like 104, and I don't know what that means, because to me, if it feels like 104, it's 104, right? So, but they, it's a hot one today, so we are happy to be up here with you guys. That's what they say. That's what they say. Uh, we don't tell the government about what we got at home. We don't tell them. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I thank you for your time. We've had a blast here in Tennessee. Uh, that's all I got. Woohoo! Zach's going to come up and talk some more. <laughs> no, thanks, Chip. I just want to let y'all know that at 2 o'clock we're going to have Anna with Fermented Homestead up on the stage. So hopefully you stick around. She's going to be doing a fermentation presentation.